They're walking down the aisle in the supermarket and they see the big, cheap, green, healthy looking vegetable. And they don't buy it because they think, I don't know what to do with that. And no one's talking about it on my talk shows. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and today I'm going to do a cooking video about cabbage. And this is for all the people that are walking down the aisle in the supermarket and they see the big, cheap, green, healthy looking vegetable. And they don't buy it because they think, I don't know what to do with that. And no one's talking about it on my talk shows. So I'm going to talk about this because, you know, really when you grow up, uh, maybe uh, your, your parents gave you a boiled cabbage dinner sort of thing, or cabbage rolls, or borscht, things like that. There's more you can do with cabbage. And I'm going to show you a really quick, two quick easy ways to use up a whole head of cabbage. Won't take any time at all. Um, so that you can maybe include this. I'm growing some in my garden right now, but they're only about this big right now. But I'm going to have a lot of cabbage to deal with at some point in the summer. So I thought I'd do an episode talking about things you can do with cabbage. Now, geez, I got no knife here. Um, now the first thing is that one head of cabbage, unless you're throwing a party, is an, is an awful lot of, of cabbage, right? So uh, what I would do is cut it in half and do two different things with it. All right. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take the cabbage and make what I would call a lazy man's sauerkraut. Okay. Um, you take the cabbage, you cut it up, you put it in salt water and you leave it on the counter for about a week. Then you stick it in the fridge and it'll keep for months like that. So you can use it at your leisure. It won't go bad. You just put this in the fridge like this. It'll just slowly go bad from the inside out or from the outside in, right? Uh, so this is a great way to keep your cabbage and uh, you can use it for lots of different things. So let me show you how that all goes together. You get a clean jar and you uh, take the cabbage Cut it in quarters, cut the, cut the heart out. You can save that for soup stock or feed it to your chickens or rabbits or do whatever you want with it. Take the outer skin off because that's usually been handled or is nasty or what have you. Okay, so now we've got nice, two nice clean pieces of cabbage. Uh, you've got a nice clean jar. It's been washed and, you know, ideally sterilized to some extent. Now we're just going to cut this cabbage up into um, more manageable pieces. Right? Just like that. That's, that's about it. Maybe into thirds. Okay. You look, cutting your hands off. Now we're just going to take these, throw them in the jar. You might have to break them up so that they fit in there, right? You're, you're depending on your level of skill, uh, you might not get it all in there. And it's handy to have some sort of tool to use to push and jam it in there. And the reason I'm not shredding it up, I'm putting it in big chunks like this, is that I can use it for different things. Okay, after this has cured, I mean, you're basically fermenting the cabbage. Um, oldest way to preserve vegetables ever, right? Um, so you can cut this up and put it in stir fries. There's a uh, kind of like a fried rice dish I like to do, where you use the, the cabbage. Um, lots of different things you can do. Try to get that in there. It doesn't hurt to have something, you know, a rolling pin or whatever. Give it a bit of a uh, little bit of encouragement. Yeah. Hmm. There we go. Well, it's about uh, 26 degrees in the house today, so if I break into a sweat, uh, you know, don't get, uh, don't get too offended. I hope I don't offend anyone's sensibilities. Uh, all right, so the last piece you want to sort of Reserve a piece that's a bit wider than the opening of the jar. So you can sort of jam it in and use it to hold everything else down because you want everything, everything has to be underwater with this system. So you, you save a piece that'll jam in there and stay. So I'm leaving this out because it'll float. Okay, so now we got all our cabbage in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to, I got three cups of water here. It's been boiled and then allowed to cool so I know it's sterile. And I'm going to put three tablespoons of salt in there. All right. Now just because there's three tablespoons in this, of salt in the water here doesn't mean 
all three tablespoons of salt is going to be absorbed into the cabbage, all right? Most of the salt is dissolved in the water. That's where it's going to stay. You're creating a solution here that only a handful of things can grow and proliferate. And it's a solution, an environment, that really um, favors um, a bacteria that when it ferments with a vegetable, it uh, is, is good for you. It enhances, if you like that sort of thing, the flavor of the vegetable. But it also creates a level of acidity that um, keeps the vegetable good. That's why people have been, this is called lacto-fermentation. Uh, that's why people have been preserving vegetables in many different ways all around the world using salt uh, in this way. It's also why prior to the world of refrigeration, <laughs> uh, salt was such a, a valuable commodity and, you know, wars were fought over it and kingships were made and broken over it. Um, so you just stir that around until it's just dissolved. You can't see any salt in the bottom anymore. I've achieved that now. And you pour it in. And this is three cups of um, the brine. Three cups rarely fills the whole thing. This is a, uh, what's this, half gallon jar. Okay, you can, you're gonna have to adjust my recipe depending on the size of jars you have, but this is a half gallon jar. I like using these for pickling and canning. Uh, they tend to have the right amount. Now at this stage, you can do one of two things. You can just add more water, right? There's an enzyme, the, the, the bacteria that does all the work, it's in the cabbage, it's already there. Um, just waiting to have the right environment, what they call an anaerobic environment, an environment with no air, right? Just a submerged water environment. Uh, <coughs> it's already there, it's present in the vegetable. It will emerge and begin to pro proliferate and start working on the vegetable fermenting. But if you've made a batch previously, right, you can just that smells like pickle and juice to me. You can just top it up using that. Some people call this the mother, right? Um, again, you, you don't have to do this, but it certainly helps to ensure uh, that everything's going to work. It also speeds things up because you're basically starting with, with a culture uh, already, already set up. Okay, so I've got that there. Put the lid on. I've got these plastic lids. These are almost never perfectly airtight. So you just gotta put it on two finger tight. And as this begins to work, you're gonna leave it on the counter for a week underneath a brown paper bag or wrapped in a towel. It has to be no light. Light and this bit bacteria do not get along. So you need this to be dark. So just leave it on the counter so you're aware of it. Mark the date down of when you put it in the jar. You're gonna leave it on your counter for five, six, seven days. I usually go with seven days, but if it's really hot where you are, it might take less time. It's really hot today, but th these temperatures are not typical. It's about 20, 23 inside the house today. It's usually more like 19, but uh, anyway. Uh, mark the date down, leave it on the counter for a week. Put it in the fridge. It'll keep for months like that. Um, if you don't have this kind of lid, and you've just got the, if you're using a mason jar, you've got the standard mason jar lid, these seal tight, all right? So if you put it on tight, it's, it's pretty hard not to put one of these on tight. You just got to remember that every morning, you loosen it and tighten it. Every evening, you loosen it and tighten it. It's called burping the jar. Right? As this ferments, gases are going to build up and there's going to be pressure in there. It needs to get out. Right? Or it can just make a real mess. Right? Um, so it's called burping. Loosen, tighten every morning and night for a week. So it's a bit of a thing to do, but you know, it can be fun. You can involve your children or whatever. Um, one risk and the reason I've gone to these plastic lids is that because this is so salty and they don't make these damn things uh, rust proof, uh, it rusts your rings and it rusts the lids. Uh, if you know anything about mason jars, the lids are unbelievably easy and cheap to replace. The rings, usually you have to buy them with the lids. <laughs> you can't just buy rings. Um, so these will rust out on the inside and they'll never seal properly again. So I don't like to use these, right? And there's other fanciful things you can use on the top, products you can buy and so on and so forth. But I find these are ideal for pickling. These, it's just, it's just the plastic version of this. You can buy them online. You can buy them <coughs> at, um, you know, any store, any store where they sell canning supplies. In Canada, that would be Walmart, Canadian Tire, maybe a grocery store if it's large enough, right? Um, so 
yeah, two finger tight on the counter, cover it with something that keeps the light out, leave it for a week and put it in the fridge, right? So then after a week, and once you've got it nice and cold, you'll have something like this, right? Which is a, you know, a pickled, it's, it's, it's basically pickled uh, cabbage, right? Here, I'll show you a little closer. It's crunchy, even though this has been in my fridge for, I don't know, two months. It's crunchy, it's zippy, it's uh, um, acidic, like a vinegar, but different, you know, more, in my, in my opinion, more pleasing than a vinegar, vinegar would be on the palate. Um, and uh, yeah, just tastes great. It's, of course, it's salty too, right? But not that salty, but you just add that to a stir fry, or if you wanted to have uh, sauerkraut, um, yeah, if you, let's say you were making sausages or something like that, or any dish that we want to have uh, sauerkraut on the side, this is sauerkraut, right? All you got to do is just take it and, uh, you know, chop it up. Right? Chop it up. Side dish. Sauerkraut, ready to go, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's another option, right? Let me clean this mess up. All right. So that's lazy man sauerkraut. Now, the other thing you can do with this is you can make a coleslaw that is a non-mayonnaise coleslaw, but you can add mayonnaise to it later on. Now, to me, I grew up, and growing up, for me, the best coleslaw in the world was um, Kentucky Fried Chicken Colonel Sanders coleslaw. And the recipe I'm going to show you here is going to give you a result very similar to that in terms of flavor, all right? So the first thing we've got to do is uh, just cut this up so that it's a little bit more manageable so I can get it into the uh, food processor. So we just cut it up in some chunks. That'll fit in the food processor. Okay, that's all ready to go. Got uh, some carrot. It's nice to have. Uh, carrot's got a bit of, it's more sweet than cabbage. So we can add that to the equation. All right, we got that all cut up. And uh, I'm going to use a food processor to prepare this because um, my wife, my kids, and myself like it this way. Your coleslaw doesn't have to be chopped up finely, but I like it that way. Um, I've got a food processor. I like to use the, fit, the fitting that has this, so it's, it's basically fine cheese grater setting. If you're low on money, um, this is a lot cheaper option. These cost like 300 bucks, give or take, um, and they don't make these as good as they used to. The, I, I tried to replace a part on this, and they, they basically have gone, these were really well made maybe 20 years ago, which is about how old this is. They don't make them as well anymore. Anyway, if you want to go low budget but totally reliable, just use one of these old knuckle, uh, knuckle busters, as they used to say on the food processor, processor commercial. It still works great, just takes a few more minutes, okay? Uh, but for the, for the purpose of video, speeding things up, I'll use this giant machine. All right, so all we're doing is putting every, shredding everything up. All right, so we got that all shredded up, and you know, one of the main reasons I use half a cabbage for this recipe is that, but that's about as much as you can jam into this food processor. Um, so, got that all shredded up. Unplug that thing so I don't lose my fingers. Put that all in there. All right, so now I got everything all shredded up, and now we're just going to put the ingredients that is going to take this cabbage and carrots and turn it into something uh, a little more special. So at this point in time, all we got to do is add a quarter cup of sugar, 
want it less sweet, use less sugar. If you want it more sweet, use more sugar. Start with my, my uh, ingredients here and adjust it up or down depending on your taste. A uh, quarter cup of vinegar, just a vinaigrette basically. And a uh, quarter cup of vegetable oil. Use whatever vegetable oil you think is the best. Uh, as everybody knows, I'm cheap, so I tend to just use plain old vegetable oil. Probably because that's what they, they used at Kentucky Fried Chicken, and I'm going for that flavor. Okay, so that's our uh, vinegar oil and uh, sugar. Uh, you're going to add a, a teaspoon of salt. and a teaspoon of pepper. You can use less pepper. I like things a little bit uh, zippy. This is white pepper. Use whatever pepper you got. Okay, and now all you're gonna do is take this and mix it around. You just mix it until it's all the same color. So the result of this is a vinaigrette based coleslaw. And the reason you mix it up like this is because it'll keep for a fairly long time in the fridge. I don't know how long, but, uh, you know, and I don't want to use your own judgment or do your own research or whatever, but um, the difference between this kind of coleslaw and the stuff with mayonnaise in it is that you have to be perpetually worried about the mayonnaise going bad and giving you salmonella and that sort of stuff. So by preparing it this way, you've added things that preserve uh, vegetables. You've added salt. That's a preservative. Vinegar, that's a preservative. And even sugar, you think about jam, right? Jam is fruit plus sugar. Um, doesn't, it seems to take forever to go bad, right? So you've added, and the oil just uh, kind of seals things in and has a nice flavor. The oil really doesn't do much to preserve, I don't think. But anyway, you've, what you're doing is, I mean, here you're preserving the cabbage for later use through whatever means. And here you're preserving the cabbage for later use. You want to give this a good mix so that the salt uh, comes into contact with everything. And you know, it's really better, I mean, for theatrical purposes in a video, I just added the ingredients, the, all the ingredients to this. Uh, normally I'd take a mason jar and I put the salt, the pepper, the oil, the vinegar, and the sugar. I put it all in the jar, put the lid on, shake it until it seems to be, you know, combined and pour it in, right? That way you know that it's the salt and the sugar are all uh, dissolved and uniformly distributed throughout the uh, throughout the vinaigrette. But just by doing this, you'll achieve the same uh, end. And actually by doing this, you're kind of massaging the uh, cabbage a little bit, which does help it um, get soft and break down. All right, so now we've got a, a nice uh, now, you're going to put this in a container and put it in your fridge and whenever you want to have this with some, we're going to have fish and chips tonight, so I like coleslaw with my fish and chips. You know, you, you take this out of the fridge, you give it a bit of a toss around, take out what you need, put the container back in the fridge. If you want this to be that creamy, white, rich, filling, delicious, wonderful, uh, you know, sweet stuff that uh, you get from the store, uh, if you want that, all you got to do is add mayonnaise to it. And if it's not sweet enough, add a little more sugar to it. It really depends on your taste, or if it's not salty enough, or not peppery enough, whatever. You just adjust it, right? Um, but here you've just created a way to preserve this stuff, so you can use it in various different ways. Uh, if you want to make it the creamy white coleslaw, I would add, now for me, a heaping teaspoon per cup. Okay, you could add a tablespoon per cup. You could go less, you could go more, right? It really depends on how creamy you want it, <laughs> how rich, how fattening, that sort of thing, right? But I have found uh, a heaping teaspoon per cup of this um, should satisfy your desire for uh, creamy, sweet coleslaw. So there we have it. We've got uh, coleslaw, uh, vinaigrette coleslaw that you can, you know, adjust and make it a creamy coleslaw as you need it. Keeps a long time like this. And you've got a lazy man sauerkraut that can be used for various different things. It'll keep a long time in the fridge. Now that one big uh, overwhelming head of cabbage is two things with, that are uh, um, multi-use things, right? Uh, so I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. You can check out my other uh, cooking videos. I got a whole uh, 
whatever that's called, a video series on that. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden and have fun in your kitchen. Thanks for watching.